Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. This is episode 12. My name's Hi. I'm Tom. I was just uh, there. I mean, Hello. Whatever. Hello. We didn't see you last week, but we want to provide you good content and not just fill up stuff. If you want that in-between weekly content, join our Signal group. Find us on Mastodon. We're on the bird site. We are there. I mean, you can find us. Find us for now. Find us on YouTube. I'm not going to tell you to like, comment, subscribe, or whatever it is, but you know, I mean, do all that good stuff. If you watch it on YouTube, that helps us. We want you to find it on the main site. But anyway, there you go. Today, we want to talk about OAuth. I I thought I knew everything about OAuth, and then Tom started talking, and I'm like, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> but all I know is that it's a way to sign in without giving a website your username and password. And 10 years ago, that was awesome. And then it wasn't awesome, and I think now it's back to awesome again. I don't know if it ever, like, was terrible. Um it's not a panacea. Uh and the the nice part about OAuth is that it's it can make things a little bit easier to implement on the server side, like for a website owner. Um just because you don't have to manage usernames and passwords. Um and it can make it a little bit easier for the user too, depending on what you're doing. And I apologize, my webcam was super blurry for some reason. Well, it's just the front, the mic, the mic is good, but there you go. So, so I first heard about OAuth when there was a whole bunch of breaches and I said, and somebody said, well, why are we not letting the big websites authenticate us? Like, why do I need a website authentication for all these really stupid websites? I mean, this is where the password manager was really shining. But then all these websites just lose your information. And to be honest, I really don't need to create an account on pick your Gawker site of the week and just to read it and to do that. Why couldn't I just log in with Google or Facebook or Microsoft or Twitter or wherever else and just use that credential to do it? And turns out you could. That's what it was. It was great. I loved it. Yeah. I like honestly the main use case I have for OAuth because I I sign to a lot of things with OAuth. The main use case is exactly that. It's a website that oh hey you have to you have to log in to download a thing or you have to to log in to do whatever. It's like okay fine whatever I'm not gonna make an account. I I don't want to log into my password manager right now. Like there's there's just a lot of hassle in just signing up for a thing to click a button to get a model file to throw on a three. Right? Like, I, I don't want to deal with that. But if they have a nice, quick, convenient sign in with Google, sign in with GitHub, sign in with Twitter, sign in with whatever button to make it one click, I can just log into it. I can revoke it right after. Uh, and then, you know, of course, unsubscribe from all the spam they're going to give you. It's just easier. And for a lot of people, that's kind of the main use case is I don't want to remember another username and password. Um, that's about it. OAuth for that use case, I think, is fine. Um, with with some caveats. So most of the time when you log in with OAuth, it's going to prov uh, provide you a, a screen that says, hey, this is what the website wants when you're logging into it, right? Sometimes it's as simple as, oh, hey, they want to know your email address so they can, you know, give you a username on the screen. Cool, whatever. Everybody wants your, your email address. That's what they're going to get. Um, but sometimes uh, OAuth or a, a website can request a lot of data through OAuth, and depending on the platform and what they know about you, that can be a little scary. Like if you go to log in with Facebook and it says, oh, hey, we want to know, uh, you know, your email address. No big deal. I mean, your full name and the city you live in. And all your pictures, too. That'd be great. Like that gets a little sketchy so don't just like blindly click the sign in with whatever links like actually read that pop-up box that that comes up and tells you exactly what they're going to take from you yeah it'll take you about 15 whole seconds to read that but trust me it's worth it so you don't give away stuff that you don't really want to give away so then i don't know fast forward i don't know seven eight years all of a sudden we have all these database breaches and and then we got the news we got i at least i was hearing the news that was basically saying hey you don't want to do this because if 
if one website gets hacked, all you got to do is change the password there. But if Facebook or if your OAuth provider gets hacked, now you're really in trouble because now they have everything. So that turned me off. That turned me back off to OAuth. I was using a password manager, and and Tom's like rolling his eyes because I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say, "Yeah, that's one of those like, yes, it could happen, but it most likely will not." Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's definitely something to be said for that, right? Like, hey, if your Google account gets hacked and you have signed into everything with Google, guess what? Your everything is hacked, and that's that's not. Right? But at the same time, you have to pick where you're placing your trust, right? Do you trust your password manager? Uh, well, if your password manager gets hacked, <coughs> last pass. Excuse me. Sorry. That's just random spasm. Um, but if your password manager gets hacked and displays your passwords all over the internet, you're kind of in the same boat, right? And honestly, when it comes to Google's security tech, not privacy, security. People responsible for keeping Google safe and Google's data safe. Um, I really do think Google does a stellar job. Even Facebook does a fine job um, of securing their own systems. They do take security threats very seriously. Um, so, yes, that is a risk. Um, but also, if your Google account gets hacked, you probably have bigger problems than people getting access to the forums you've signed it's i mean so then again then after a couple of years now uh apple stands on stage and has their own oauth mechanism and with face id you can log in and it does all these great stuff and now we are back on the oauth bandwagon and and i love oauth then i hit a problem my problem was and i remember this this was this was i actually have two problems but the first one was I go to code.org and I'm doing my lessons with my students and I signed in with one of them. I don't remember. It was either Google or Microsoft or their, their ones. And I wanted to use a different account or I wanted to switch it or I wanted to do something and I couldn't. I had to create a whole new account because I guess I learned I didn't want to be signed in at the school. So I wanted to have an actual username and password. And I didn't want to merge those two. But the other really big annoying example is the McDonald's app. So I would, I logged in with McDonald's with my Facebook app, which we'll get to on how to remember these things in a second. And that's great. It worked. But then, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, it asked me to log in again. Now, I don't have Facebook installed on my, uh, my phone, which is, which I, I urge everyone, if you are just a casual Facebook, Instagram user, like even if you're a little more than casual, just go to the mobile website. Just try it for a week. Just tell yourself you're going to try it for a week. I would bet that probably 80 to 90% of you will end up just liking it. And with that said, then you can delete the Facebook and Instagram app and, and that would save a tremendous amount of battery and it forces you to go there. Now, if you're going there once an hour or whatever, you don't need those notifications right away. You're going to go there anyway. So don't worry about that. But anyway, so the McDonald's app would say log in with Facebook. I would click it and I'm not authenticated. Now I have to go in on the McDonald's web eye view and do my whole two factor thing and I had to do this every time. So I said, oh, can I switch it? No, McDonald's, the app did not have a way to be able to add my account on a username and password site. So now I had to create a different account. And by the way, now I went to OAuth again and it doesn't work because you already have that account and it's a big problem. Unfortunately, a lot of a person's OAuth experience is quite literally going to come down to implementation detail. Uh, and, and by that, I mean, it's implementation detail on the site you are signing into, not necessarily who is providing your OAuth access, right? It's not Google or Microsoft or Facebook that you have to worry about. It's, you know, bobsfishingforum.net or whatever, right? Um, if a website owner can structure uh, login in such a way to say, okay, you can log in with this these service providers and that is your account, that is all you get. You can only log in with these service providers and that's it. If you have you know, a, a Twitter account and a Facebook account and a Google account that you're logging into this website with through OAuth, um, those are three separate accounts and a website owner can make that a reality. They, right, they, they can just say, now we don't do account linking, it's all different, uh, you know, you have to manage this yourself. That can be super annoying. 
Or you can have the really nice websites who say, okay, we've got your email address. If you try to log in with a password and it's wrong, you can just click the forgot password thing. We'll email you. And then we've got our own username and password system on the back end. Plus, you can sign in with an OAuth provider. Plus, you can go to the settings page and just sign in with as many OAuth providers as you want. Click any of the shiny buttons on the front page and we'll log you into the exact same account. That's cool. That's super convenient. I've actually used that to, like, for some accounts I don't care about that much, like losing access to, but I want it to be convenient enough to log in no matter what I'm on or what I'm using or what I'm logged into at the time. Yeah, I will absolutely add GitHub and Microsoft and Google and Twitter and an email address and a password, uh, all as authentication mechanisms into this account. Uh, and if it's set up correctly, that can be really wonderful and just an easy user experience. That said, uh, there is danger there in adding multiple OAuth providers to an account. Because if one of those gets hacked, well, now you've lost access to the, that account. Uh, it's quite literally like, uh, like if you could create multiple passwords to access the same account on the same website, right? Uh, well. Yeah, like one strong password is good, but if you could get in with two strong passwords, well, that's less good because now there's just one more thing that they could randomly stumble upon or one more password that could get hacked and uh, then they can get into your account. So the more ways to access an account, technically, it's less safe because there's just more access points to the thing you're trying to protect. Is that convenience worth it to you? totally fine. That's valid. Depending on the account, what you're protecting, and what your threat model is, you can have as many roads as you want. Just understand that you are decreasing security, you know, I, I would say a minor amount by having those multiple in. If you are using an OAuth provider, make sure that the one you're using, keep a really cool, like, strong password on that thing, because you don't want to lose access to a big main account that controls a bunch of stuff. When I was in my OAuth phase, I would, I would just, oh, what, I would, I would sit there and I would have this decision, this existential decision of, do I use my Google account? Do I use my Twitter account? Because we're going to talk about that. It is, it does add a signal of what I'm sure Google and Twitter and all of them use this as signal, but I'm sitting there. Is this something I want my Google account associated with, or is this something I don't want just my, my Twitter account? So I would start doing that and then. And then I would forget which OAuth provider I used. So now I'm sitting there, was this a Google one? Was this a Twitter one? And I'm clicking there and it's not working. And then I got, again, all bent out of shape over this. And then I will tell you, I really like signing with Apple. And so signing in with Apple works really well, but they create an account based on your Apple ID account, which if you have a different email, because we talked about that forever ago, I have different emails for different things, that wouldn't work. And that caused a big problem. So so getting OAuth right to someone, somebody who's listening to this show, getting OAuth right is a challenge. Getting OAuth right to the real average person who has one email, has Facebook or Google for everything or Apple for everything, and they just click that is really nice. But if you have anything that deviates from that, it becomes, you can forget and you can forget which account you're using. It can create other accounts. I think if you click uh, create um, login with Apple and you don't have an account now, boom, you have an account and it's not the one you wanted. So now you got to figure out how to delete that account. And it be just, it, it, it becomes a challenge, but when it works, it is beautiful. It is very nice. And I'll let you explain. It's also phishing proof, right? Because it pops up that little box and it says, hey, is this you? Uh, which account do you want to do? And I think that's phishing proof. I wouldn't call it phishing proof necessarily. I think that's a little strong. Um, it does lower the chance. Like there, there's always a chance that someone could try to do some man in the middle shenanigans and then you're dealing with like breaking HTTPS or getting somebody to accept a certificate or bypass an error and then like grabbing the OAuth token in transit. Like there, there are ways to try to hack, intercept and uh, basically replay OAuth. But it's, if you are in that situation, if you are being targeted by actors who are actively pulling off an attack like that, 
you probably know it. Um, I don't really worry about fishing with them. Uh, I don't. I don't think my threat model includes actors like that for the most. Essentially, it's popping up a box, a Google box. So instead of saying, "Is this an actual Google website that I have to log into?" it pops up an, a legit Google box that either has your accounts there if you're logged into Google already, or you will have to log on. But you know that that's coming from Google. Like, like you said, if they're breaking HTTP, that's a different story. That that that's not for this show. But generally speaking, that is a more secure way of logging in, knowing that it's going through Google. Like uh, honestly, the main the main security benefit in OAuth to an average person who doesn't care at all about this nerdy stuff is hey. Do you have a really strong Google password or a Facebook password or whatever, whoever your auth provider is? Cool. Um, are you going to make a really strong password on your... Lo or do you trust that person to make a really strong password on their local news website to comment on a story about a water skiing squirrel? Well, if you don't, that login with Facebook button can be just the best security boon in the world. No passwords to manage. Uh, no, no usernames and passwords to share across accounts or reuse. You just click that button, and as long as that one account is safe, it's fine. Um, now, the signals thing is important, and we should definitely cover that because uh, OAuth, uh, at least the a lot of OAuth providers will by default just say, okay, yeah, here's here's this person's email address as an identification token. When you log in with Google, they get your Gmail address or whatever email address or domain you've got. Google. Um, and yeah, that's a signal. That's data. That's definitely saying, hey, this person who has a Google account over here uh, is the same person that is logging into this website over here. Google knows it. The website knows it. Uh, and any data brokers in between who are buying and selling that data, they also know it. So if you are on a Google account that is 100% against F1 car racing, like anti-racing, anti-wheel spinning fast, the whole deal is just abhorrent to you. They're just like, I hate F1 cars at gmail.com or whatever. And you log into an F1 car fan site. Well, now they know, right? Now, now you are in conflict because you have this account that says one thing or that you purport to be one thing uh, and you have logged into a site that's clearly not that. Um, so just keep in mind that if you are logging into things through OAuth, Understand that a connection is being made there and that the data doesn't just evaporate into thin air. Algorithms, people, data scientists, whatever, are paying attention to these signals and it is being logged. So on the flip side of that, so yes, that's a really strong signal to say that this email address and this Google profile, who is a real person, is behind that, is connected to this. But anything else, like they can grab your name. They can grab your email address, but if you don't provide anything else, the website doesn't have right the doesn't have any of that other information, right? They just have your name and your email address. If that's all you give it to them, they wouldn't have it from a primary source. So if they are but, partnering with other data brokers that sell data to mash up profile information based on email address, and those places do exist, um, then they could make the same kind of info. That said, they might be able to make the same kind of inference from just IP address, especially if you're on a home network. But like, but Google gets all the the signal mojo from the your anti F1 racing, and that's an F1 site. Now they know that something's there. So Google or yeah. your your OAuth provider gets that that strong correlation. The other way has to do a little more work. A little more. I wouldn't yeah. even call it a lot more. It's okay. a minor amount of at best that that's a little scary because again when when oauth was good it was like no you're you're stopping the release of your personal identifiable information out there and i guess it's just really in a data breach where they just have your name and your oauth provider but like you said i feel like it's a trivial amount of work to to just connect the dots yeah they're, they're gonna have email address that's that's pretty common across the oauth providers um now i i really like um this is gonna this is gonna age us both. I really liked how Google Plus did it because you were able to say, you know, I want to connect these things in this way. 
Um, but I only want to share with the circle. Or I only want to share this information. Or I don't want to give anybody anything except just my name and email. And uh, that was that was great. Now, that said, um, if I remember correctly, uh, and I apologize because it's been a while, I think Google Plus was on the open ID train, which is not OAuth. It's a different thing. They're kind of like in the same ballpark of like technology fields, but they accomplish things in very different ways. And this is not an open ID show. And honestly, it's not popular enough to, for it to be on this show. At all. So, sorry. It's, do, do you want to tell us how single sign on is also not OAuth? It's not OAuth. I would classify as a type of single sign-on, but it itself is not a, a pure single sign-on solution. I would say I, this this gets into the weed, and nerds are super pedantic, and uh, there's there's a lot of questions around like, is this thing part of this category or is it not, or is it like a pure form of this category, or is it like munch with something else? And honestly, all of technology is. A well, so so single sign on. Somebody explained to me how Microsoft does single sign on and why you're constantly asked for your email address, and I was blown away by how detailed it was. But you are right; it's single sign on is is different enough to say that it's not part of of OAuth. But just just to reclarify, so so the, the good the, the problem that I always had with this is that different websites had different implementations. Some had like I want to know, you know what? I'm going to use Twitter for everything. Okay? I mean, while Twitter is still an active website, I can keep so little information there. I can create and just I have a, t a Twitter handle and that's really it. And then just sign on to all these different websites. The problem is some don't have Twitter, some don't have Facebook, some don't have Google, some don't have Apple. And now you're in the, I'm forgetting which one I'm using to do my OAuth with. And I'm sure that's been a problem. And so, and there is no way around that. And it, it just felt kludgy to me that they couldn't come up with some sort of obviously one standard which would then balloon into another standard that no one would use and and move on from there it was always it was always a question of who's who's OAuth provider you're going to use and sometimes you say I'm only going to do the first one whatever the first one is that's what I'm going to do so I can remember uh, another con I want to bring up just because it, it can happen to people um, is that if your OAuth provider bans your account or you lose access to it or you change the password and, and throw it away and you change your email address and you have access to that. Basically, if you can't get into your account for the OAuth provider, guess what? You can't get into anything you have signed into other websites with using that account. So if Twitter bans you and deletes your account, all the stuff you signed into with Twitter, you now can't access unless the owner of that site or service um, has made it uh, so like you can use an email address to do password recovery or you have multiple sign-on options that you can still get into your account with. If your OAuth token is the only way you have ever been able to log into that particular service, yeah, it's quite literally a single point of failure. If your OAuth provider shuts down your account or you can't get into it for whatever reason, you now can't get into all of the other accounts. So just something to think about if you do have a sign in with whatever uh, account on a website that you deem really important to yourself. Just keep in mind that you might want to go through the settings and at least see if you can add an email address or if they've got one or if you could just sign in with username and password. If it's really important, have a couple different ways to access it. And I know I did say, if you do that, you're lowering security by, you know, a mild amount. Um, think about it. Make, make the decision given your threat model. Uh, to me, losing accounts accidentally is something that feels kind of bad. Uh, so I like to have multiple different ways to get at the same data. And then we're almost at the end. I We always talk about this in, in the December show is to audit your OAuth account. So go every year at the end and figure out, do these websites still exist? Do you still need OAuth? Because the other good thing is you could just delete the link and then the account goes away. So they're not spamming you because they have no more record of you. Oh. Not necessarily. 
they will still have your email address. They'll still have all the data you put into the service. What they won't have is an active OAuth link. Um, you'll have to basically reauthorize uh, your login with your OAuth provider. Um, but it doesn't delete anything except the active token, except the, the link saying, oh, yeah, they've totally authorized OAuth and they can log in with this. You'll just have to redo that process. But the website owner that you're logging into still has that data. Either way, we still tell you if you're not using the website, it's a good idea to break that link. Uh, go through, like we said, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, your authorized apps and just get rid of what you don't need. And when you do need it, your account will, I guess, still be there and then finally logged in. So I think that's it for today. Anything else? Um, I will say, just for the record, I love OAuth. Um, so, like, instead of requiring people like, oh, yeah, give us your, your password for this account, and then we'll log in and make sure that you've got access to this thing. Like, that's super dangerous and super sketchy, and there are reasons why websites want information from other accounts. Um, one, of, one of my favorite ser uh, services is Movies Anywhere, where you can log into, like, you know, Amazon and, and other movie buying sites around the internet, and they'll say, oh yeah, so these uh, these cinema providers have partnered with Movies Anywhere, and if you buy a movie on one platform, we'll just give it to you on all the rest. So you can watch any movie anywhere. If you find a movie for digital purchase cheaper on one site and it's part of Movies Anywhere, congratulations, you can now watch it on all of the competing services, because that's what the media providers wanted. And you know how they do that link? all OAuth. That's it. It's a, just a bunch of OAuth tokens in a pile all linking to you as one person. Uh, and you've got one account, but all of your media shows up everywhere where they've partnered with Movies Anywhere. And it's it's really cool. And what's even cooler than that is it's really secure. You don't have to give uh, too much more uh, than you would otherwise just buying these outright on all the different platforms. And it'll save you some cash. Um, if you haven't checked out Movies Anywhere, I know it's not security related, but it seems to work for me. Uh, so I like them and I can recommend them. Again, if you find somebody who doesn't want um, a password manager, but you can try and convince them to use OAuth or sign in with Apple or Google or wherever Facebook, you may want to tell them to do that. If you're not going to use a password manager and you're going to use a weak password because you don't care, Maybe try try to do this. That may be another security avenue that you can describe to people. Uh, having that one but button click, even if you have an account, like you said, with all the different roads, it's just so much easier just to click and say, oh, it's there. So with that said, any more parting words? Nothing here. Okay. Again, I'll remind people who watch YouTube to uh, to to do all the great things to help us out. With that said, I guess we will see you next week. See you, everyone.